For those of you who are working with Affinity Designer and need to develop some uh, objects that have some symmetry in them, uh, there's, there's no kind of symmetry tool as, as such that you just click on and you can draw in symmetry. I'm not sure if the other vector programs have them, but here's a great workaround with it. So let's say we are going to be doing a, let's say a shield. Yeah, okay, let's create a shield. I'm going to go new. I usually create an artboard when I'm working. We'll leave the settings as they are, and then I choose routinely transparent background, because if I want to add a solid background, I can just create a layer and make it solid. But if I want to use transparency, I know then it's, it's part of my object as such, so it doesn't by default put in a, a white background. And then I'll just keep this page width here. And we'll keep it 1,200 by 1,000. I mean, 1,200 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Let's go. Okay. So the key here is we're wanting to create a shield. Um, the method that I recommend is to use uh, what we call symbols. Now, if you go at the bottom here, you you'll see there's a palette here called symbols. If it's not visible, I'll just close that. You go to View, Studio, and Symbols. The idea with symbols is that you create a particular object and you have it as a symbol so that when you use it, you can reuse it through throughout your documents. And if you make an alteration to the symbol, everywhere where the symbol is represented, you could uh, make the alterations automatically or you could isolate them. They like instances in uh, when you're designing things in 3D, you work with instances. You can I either isolate an instance and make it unique, or when you edit one instance, it edits all the other instances. So that's basically what a symbol represents here in a, in a nutshell. So if we want to create something that is a duplicate, um, so we're creating a half and it must create the other mirror half, technically we are going to create a symbol and we're going to create a copy of that symbol and mirror that so that when we modify the symbol, it modifies the the copy of it or the reflected copy but let me show you it's easier to show so what i'm going to do is get a rectangle tool and i'll just draw that out and i will make sure i'm selected over there currently it's filled in with gray and has a a black border but there's absolutely no border set for it uh, width so i'm going to put it at one point and the reason for that is just that i can see it more visible we can always remove the border and the background later when we need to do so so i'm going to select that just one click on it and go to create a symbol what you will see happen when i click here is that particular shape will fill in here so this shape has got the border thickness it's got the fill, and it's got the actual size on the artboard so even though i take the the actual shape here and i can make it smaller here if i drag another one from here this actual symbol you'll see it will come in as the original shape if i want to alter the shape in there there's another way of doing that but i'll, I'll get to that later let me go Control z and just get back so we have this now is the symbol we've created over there and what i want to do is create a copy of the symbol over here now usual thing would be to go alt and then drag a copy but in this case i want a symbol another symbol like this to be there because i want both of them to be replicas of each other so i'll go ahead and drag here now i mean the sizing and you you don't know where about their sitting so the best thing to do is actually just to drag it onto the artboard. Don't worry about aligning them, you know, getting them and letting them snap and all that. Just draw it over there and then use the tools to align them perfectly. So we're going to select both of these areas. Remember these are, uh, maybe I should name this, just right click on it and rename it and call them um, uh, um, mirrors. Uh, rather queasy name but anyhow so that's our mirrors uh, this is the actual mirror symbol and this one is is a replica we've dragged on here what i want to do is get them aligned next to each other so i click that one keep shift down and click the other one 
when you go to the align tools here this one here that says align to top and the other one that says align to bottom this is how affinity works if the object if you want to align to bottom the objects look at which of the object is lowest down so which one is the furthest in the direction that you want to align to which one is in this case the one on the left is the lowest down so the one on the right is going to shift down if i had to choose this align to top it will look at which of the objects that you have selected is the highest up to the top and it will take all the other objects to that object so in this case if i click here it's going to drop the right hand side one down to the level of the left hand side one let me click and there we go and now the next thing I want to do is I want these two objects, these symbols, to actually have no space in between them. So currently when I look here on top, um, there's a little uh, icon here that says space horizontally. If I click that, it doesn't do anything to the object because it's using auto distribute. It's saying that there's only two objects and this is how they were prior to you uh, touching or fiddling with them. And probably because the space was there, that's the space you want because it can't, uh, you know, think up its own space. If I want to put a specific space in, I can disable this and choose how many pixels in between. But if I disable this by default, it's going to have zero pixels, which means it's going to move these two close together. And that's actually what I want. So as soon as I disable this, it will snap to zero pixels. And that's perfectly where I want Technically, if I had to go and I'd move this, I'd move it so many pixels away, etc. So, my point is, I want it on zero pixels. So, it's moved exactly, and then I can say, okay. So, now this object and this object have moved close together. This is These are replicas. These are both um, the same symbol. Okay. However, the left of this symbol here that I've selected is the same as the left here. So... When I create something mirror, I want it to mirror around the middle axis. So it means that I have to take this object on this side and flip it. So I'll have to use this flip horizontally so that this right hand side comes over here. So that if I do anything on this object from the middle outwards, it will draw on this side differently to this. Okay, let me exp let me show you by by example. First of all, the principle is if we have these selected and I move them, they are just uh, normal objects they are actually I'm not altering the actual symbol in here so the symbol still remains the same if I drag this over the symbol will be exactly the same shape still okay so when I drag this size it does absolutely nothing to the actual symbol however I'm going to go control Z however if I double click into this here then I go into editing the symbol if I now double click in here and now I do the same thing, you can see the other one is moving because I'm altering basically the symbol itself. And that's also a copy of the symbol. If I drag out here now, you can see that the symbol is actually made smaller. Okay, I'm going to go control Z and there we go. Okay, so double clicking makes you go into the symbol and you're allowed to edit. So that gives us a bit of an idea that if we double click and we go do something in here, it's actually altering the symbol, which means this side here, which is also representative of the symbol, will also alter. And that's where the whole principle of, of editing this mirror thing comes along. So if I double click on here and I'm going to just choose this pencil tool, uh, maybe make it uh, maybe 2.8 pixels wide and it's black. Okay, you see I adjusted that and it actually adjusted the the actual box size also maybe I should just take that back to one not fiddle with that I'm going to just come back double click in here and choose a pen tool and just use the width of this pen tool now technically if I draw here from this box on the left if I draw from the top area down to my left the same one will do across this way because they're basically a clone of each other and they're standing next to each other let's see there we go okay and interesting if you look in here by the actual symbol you'll see that stroke there because what I've done is when I double clicked into it I went inside the actual symbol and I modified the symbol so if I go now and I delete this 
I'm actually deleting it out of the actual symbol. That's why it, it comes off the same. However, I want, if I go and double click there again, if I draw here again, I don't want this to be a replica like this. I actually wanted to draw from the middle out. I wanted to have a mirror symmetry. So I'm going to have to actually flip. If I take this side one here, I'm going to flip it. So it's going to move this way. So if I double click in here now, I'm going to remove that. And if I draw now from here, there we go. Okay, so as I'm drawing, it's basically drawing. This is the same object that's here, but it's just flipped and it looks like it's, it operates as symmetry. So if I wanted to draw a circle here, I wanted to go and do other shapes in here. Okay, so it's, it's duplicating here because it's the same object that's just flipped across. But interesting, if you look into the symbol section, you can see all of those modifications are taking place and they're actually altering the symbol itself. If I'm working now and I want to add something on this side without doing it on that side, I can basically click out of the symbol. So if I click once, I'm not in the symbol to edit. If I double click, I'm in the symbol to edit. Again, the reason I know I'm in the symbol is if you look on top here, you will see the the selections change. You'll see the it says absolute size, the corner, and you could convert to curves. If I click it once, you can see that the options are quite a bit different over there. Okay, so if I wanted to just add a shape or do an alteration without affecting the actual symbol, I'll just select it once and I can draw the text and say hello. Whoops. But if I wanted the text to be on this side and that side, I'll double click in here. So I'll go into the symbol select the text tool and when I draw here can you see what happens I can say this is a mirror okay, and that's basically flipped this around so that is the, the mirror of what's happening on the left okay so I hope that gives you some sort of idea um, I'm going to just give one or two more things as to once you're done with it how, how do you clear it up uh, for usage further because oops I'm gonna double click in here and just oops let's just be careful okay so if I was going to draw a shield for example when I'm done with the shield I don't use this this black borders of these two boxes or or the fill in color uh, but for now I'll use them as a reference so I'll double click in I am now altering the actual symbol so I'll start in the middle move out and you can see there we're going let's go there go around and I'm going to end here because I haven't made it long enough okay and so that's a, a replica of what's going on if I want to edit I double click in there and of course go do my modifications what's nice is when I'm hovering over this uh, this edit point I might be obscured into seeing what's going on here because of these handles here but on the right hand side I can actually see its effect because that's the the clone so I can actually see how oh, that looks nice so by the time I deselect here I know what's happening here it's got a bit of a kink so if I go in there I can make a bit of alteration look on the right hand side okay this is a terrible shield but um, you get the idea so once we're happy with this year now we want to keep these two pieces together remember we'll be designing half off so if we want to have an offset here we'll be doing it half off as such also but in this case now I'm happy with the shield and I want to now remove this background how do I remove it I need to take it out of the actual um, symbol itself now at this stage you know you oops what am I doing um, you double click in here and once you double click you are busy editing inside here um, so the square area I actually want to remove the inside make it transparent and in the black box area around the side I want to make that also transparent and when I let go that's what I'm sitting with 
okay and it's basically now a half and a half and you can decide that you want to merge them and use the other tools but pretty much that's how we use the the area and so i'm going to put on this side i'm going to double click and i'm going to put a little circle here well, i've got no no border so i can't see let me just add one pixel around and a color okay so if i move there that's all in symmetry now okay because remember i'm clicked in and i'm moving inside of the symbol okay so if i'm happy with that i've got a transparent background I could, if i wanted to alter the height of this it's basically double click and height and it will move because i'm actually working with half and the rest is a mirror of it and it's just following suit so have a fantastic day and god bless